Hello, I'm David. I'm 71 years of age and I live in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And today I want to chat or ramble a little bit about culture. Um, I've got some notes down here, so if I keep looking down, don't get phased, OK? Um, I read a lot of expat blogs and most uh, of the people that write there are writing about searching for a better life than the life that they'd had. So a couple of examples for you, British people who have moved to Portugal. They were very unhappy with their lives after Brexit or even before Brexit, they were planning to leave because I think they knew what the outcome was going to be. And their experience of living there, buying properties, most probably dilapidated properties so they could buy something cheap do it up, what do they call it, a fixer-upper, and then live on either their savings, their pensions, or some remote income. And equally, at the moment, there is a trend of people wanting to leave the United States for whatever reason. I can only suspect or assume it's to do with politics. Now, I am not one of those people, but I do find that the one thing that I have in common with those so-called expats is the interestingness, is there such a word, of getting used to new cultures and experiencing um, a new cultures. But they still stay very much British, American or whatever. Whereas me... Although there are some things that I keep that are British, for example, I don't know if I can get the shot there. That's tea with milk and sugar. And why do they stay the way they are? I think I finally understand. Now, I live here in Bosnia-Herzegovina in this village because I married a local girl. I'll be totally honest and transparent. I wasn't happy in the UK. I've always wanted to live with some form of adventure and I didn't set out to find a new forever home. Okay. And I came to Bosnia and Herzegovina because there was something that happened in 1998 in my life. I don't know if I've mentioned it already. It's on the blog somewhere, but I will make um, a full video about it at some time in the future, but I came here, I suppose you could say for work. Yeah. And then met somebody and the rest, as they say, is history, but I didn't come here, um, looking for somewhere new, that's forever new home. That was not in the plan. Initially, the plan was only to be here for six months. And here we are, what, just over 22 years later, I do find the culture of where I live now, very interesting. But I don't feel that I could ever accept it as my culture. It's not my Britishness at all. It's just me. My mother used to say that I was, and other people too, of course, that I'm Peter Pan. I'm the boy that never grew up. And although I have grown up, look, I've got grey hair and, and all the rest of it. My mind is still as useful as ever. I'm still mischievous. I still like to have a laugh. And yeah, I still feel that I need to be exploring things. There's a lot more exploring to be done. So being like Peter Pan, the boy that never grew up, I think I'm happy with that. I like that. And I don't want to change ever. I really try and enjoy the moment. And even those moments which are growing old pains and health issues. I have one at the moment. We'll talk about that later. Does this come across as a bit weird? I certainly hope not. So back to the point, I accept the culture of where I live now. I don't think I have to adopt it. And I never ever try to tell my host that their culture is wrong in any way or that they should change. And I just want to give you an example about that from a recent trip to Rab. 
of the island in the northern Adriatic. There, there are, at the moment, a lot of German or Austrian tourists. The menus are in German, and as soon as the waiters work out that there is a German or an Austrian, they immediately start speaking Austrian, sorry, German, to them. Uh, and they think, actually, that I'm German, so you can't imagine how many people were saying, Guten Tag, and I keep saying, no, yes, I'm English, right? I'm English. And then if they know any English, they'll, they'll talk about it. But I digress. So there's a lot of German-speaking people that visit RAB as tourists, and that's brilliant because the tourism helps to keep those local people on the island of RAB at a reasonable standard of living. They can make a good little business out of it. They only have, what, a number of months in the year when the sun is brilliant and the sea is warm. So they have to make hay while the sun shines, right? But there was one occasion, and I've seen more of them, where those Germanic people were imposing, rightly or wrongly, mentally or otherwise, their culture on the Croatians. We were sat in a bar, and the lady there, the waitress, spoke German, which is good. I speak German already, all right? So she spoke to these German guests, and they ordered the beers, and she brought the beers to the table. And the reply that they got was, where's my beer mat? Where's my beer decal? So she went away and got it. And then the next time she brought beers to some other Germans, do you know what one of the, apart from saying, well, thank you very much, she said, oh, how sweet you are, you brought the beer mats. Now, I know that beer mats, beer decal, are part of German culture. It doesn't happen in Croatia. Or in the rest of the Western Balkans, as far as I'm aware, you get your beer, it goes on the table, you drink it, you say thank you, whatever. But they wanted their beer decal. And I thought, that's really bang out of order. That's not accepting where you are. And before anybody that's watching this from Germany or has German connections and wants to get stressed about it, let me tell you about the Spanish islands, right? The Spanish islands is a magnet for British tourists. And when you go there, all you can see along the seafront are English restaurants or British restaurants rather, and British bars selling fish and chips. Yeah, full English breakfast and pints of English beer. It's in Spain, for goodness sake. Shouldn't you be eating paella and drinking San Miguel? I don't know why people do this, but they do. They don't willingly or consciously accept somebody else's culture. And that really grates on me. And I go out of my way not to be like that here. Of course, there are things that I laugh and joke about. The way people drink whiskey and Coke here is just a joke to me because you never put Coca-Cola with whiskey. But then on the other hand, I suppose if somebody took a bottle of Rakia to the UK, somebody would put tonic with it, right? You know what I'm saying? But I celebrate the things that I still like about where I come from, my culture, but it doesn't stick in the front of my mind. And I try to get to terms with local culture here in the Western Balkans. And I think I do pretty well. I'm culturally attuned when it comes to history, when it comes to family, food, of course. I do struggle, and I don't think I will ever get my head around the sadness of funerals in any way at all. Yeah, that particularly is something that still I feel amazingly uncomfortable with and would rather run away from than be part of. That's not to be negative to anybody from the Western Balkans, all right? It's just that me and funerals, I'm not there. It's just not me. I am a bit of a Buddhist, so maybe that has an influence in it, but not really. But what culture does do for me, it shows us how different we are, and it's what makes us very interesting. So my 20 years here, and I've read, as I say, these expat blogs. Some people still say they're expats. I used to think that I was an immigrant, but maybe I'm changing my mind on that. Maybe the phrase or word rather, in-betweener, is best in my case. I've had a few years where I say to somebody, I'm an immigrant here, and that is true right? I'm a guest here. And an immigrant 
is normally somebody you say, would, would you like to come and stay for a long time rather than a tourist, which is, would you like to be here for up to 90 days and look around? So I'm very privileged to be here. I know that privilege comes from being married to a local. So I do have the right to stay where other people might not. But then again, I am really an in-betweener. And um, one blog I did write about moving, I think it was, yeah, moving from the United States to Europe and spending a long time in Europe. And then finally going back to the US. And where she felt lost at times, living in that other country, she said it was even the feeling of not knowing where you were, not knowing who you are, and about the culture was even worse when she went back. And her recommendation was, if you're going to make a long-term move, make it, because when you go back, it will never be the same. I don't have any plans to go back to the UK. I haven't been on holiday there now for two years or gone back to visit for two years and I'll have to do that. But for me, I know I'm coming back. For me, when I go back to my home or original culture, yeah, I enjoy the things that I used to miss, like black pudding and fried bread with my breakfast, Cornish pasties, which are a delicacy. And of course, not fish and chips, it's pie and mash and mushy peas. So I have those and I enjoy them. But to be honest, I do feel really out of place. And when I come back here to the village, I feel like I'm home. I do have that warm, fuzzy feeling of being at home. And that happened last week, actually. Loved Rab to bits. Actually, I could live there. If it wasn't so suffocatingly hot now that I can't stand the, the temperature, and I have to sit under trees all day while Tamara swims because she's a mermaid, right? I married a mermaid. But when we came back, I just loved it. Everything was like normal to me. So this is my home. I don't really think or anticipate I'll live anywhere long term again. But yeah, I'm not an immigrant anymore. I'm not a tourist anymore. I am a foreigner, a stranatz. That's a fact. But I think I'm an in-betweener. I live in this in-between world, which might be the best place for Peter Pan to be. What do you think? Thanks very much indeed for watching this. Your support means a lot to me. So if you've watched this far and you'd like to subscribe, I really would like that. If you'd like to give me a thumbs up, even better. If you'd like to make a comment, I would certainly like to do that because I definitely will respond. And if you'd like to press the notification button so that you don't have to look for anything else uh, from me on YouTube because, bing, it'll come up on your laptop, your mobile, your desktop or wherever. So until the next video, thanks very much indeed. And stay safe wherever you are. Vidimus Opit. See you again soon.